Recently, I was feeling more anxious and depressed than usual, and so I went and talked with a counselor. I wanted some help working through some of my past leadership decisions, and, and here's what my counselor told me. He said, you need to stop playing mental and emotional volleyball where you try to compete against yourself. He says, nobody's going to win because you always know your next move. Instead, he told me that I should learn to practice mindfulness. Now, mindfulness is a pretty trendy idea right now. You, you'll probably see magazines that are dedicated to mindfulness and there's programs and businesses and schools on practicing mindfulness. Even this morning, I was looking at a, an app on my Fitbit and there was, a, there was a program for practicing mindfulness. So what is mindfulness? Well, some people try to find its origins in Eastern religi religions and meditation practices, but really the definition of mindfulness is learning how to be fully alive in the present. It also means that you're able to not be overwhelmed by all the ups and downs of your emotions and you don't internalize the opinions of everybody around you so that you can be fully alive in the present. Now, if that's what it is, then the Bible teaches a form of mindfulness. Uh, the Bible in, in Psalm 46 says, Be still and know that I am God. It was the Apostle Paul who says, This one thing I do, forgetting what is behind me and pressing on towards what is ahead. It's Jesus who said, Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will have enough trouble, or tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And so the Bible is always telling us to get back to the present, to be fully alive in the present. But how do you do that? Well, that's what we're going to be discussing the rest of this week. We're going to look at the life of Jesus and see how Jesus practiced a form of mindfulness. But for today, let's at least take the first step. Let's learn to be fully alive in the present. I'm going to tell you a, a, a verse from the Psalms, Psalm 118. I'm going to say it and then you repeat it and it can be kind of a mantra for you today. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Ready? This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And so when you wake up in the morning and you're anxious and nervous about all the things that are going to happen today or tomorrow or in the years to come, bring yourself back to the present and remind yourself that this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. When you're at work or at school and you're just so filled with, with maybe shame and guilt for things that you've done in the past, the past day, the past year, the past months, remember, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. See, the thing is, yesterday has been forgiven and forgotten. And God's already in charge of tomorrow. And so you can be fully alive right now in the present. Let's pray. Lord God, so often we can live anywhere but right now. We can be filled with grief and, and shame about our past. And we can be so fixated and anxious about the future. But Lord God, lead us to trust in you, to know that you have forgiven our past, that you're in control of our future, so that we can be fully mindful right now in the present. Amen. Hey, what's up everyone? Pastor Mike here from Time of Grace. Thanks so much for checking out this podcast. Uh, we certainly would love this message to reach more and more people. So if you wouldn't mind rating and reviewing this podcast, it would bring it to more people's eyes and we pray this message into more people's hearts. Thanks for your support and we'll talk to you soon.